Last year, 2.5 million people entered the United States seeking asylum, many of whom are from South America, fleeing extreme poverty. But there's another migration taking place to America, one that's caught everybody completely by surprise. Chinese migrants. Yes, you heard that right. We saw large groups, including many from the middle class, come through a four-foot gap at the end of a border fence. Border Patrol now reports a 900% spike in Chinese migrants crossing the southern border. This man, a college graduate told us he hoped to find work in Los Angeles. So there are actual members who were in the People's Liberation Army, and they are here in the United States. And really what we're talking about is China putting together the infrastructure in the U.S. to attack the U.S. Why did you decide to come to the United States? Oh, it's hard to live there, it's hard to find jobs. Did you work in China? I oh, worked in cool. the factory, but... Now, I'm not saying that China is going to invade the United States, but if we were to defend Taiwan, you have to think that this is a part of some plan or strategy. So over 200,000 people from Venezuela came to the United States in 2023. And that's what we usually think about in America when we think about immigration. We think of people from South America fleeing extreme poverty. But a migration from China? That's not something that most of us have ever heard of. And it brings up a lot of questions. Customs and Border Protection reported more than 24,000 Chinese migrant encounters at the southern border last fiscal year. In 2021, that number was just 450. Did you just arrive here? So China is 7,000 miles away from the U.S. southern border. That's the opposite side of the Earth. Making the journey from China to America one of the longest migrations of any group coming to the U.S. And believe it or not, the number of folks coming here from China is increasing at an increasing rate. But before we uncover the real reasons why this is taking place, it's important to understand that Chinese Americans have made many contributions to this country, most of which do not get the recognition they deserve. For example, most people don't know that the U.S. Transcontinental Railroad was built by Chinese immigrants. Immigrants. That was 150 years ago, and this is a World War II memorial for Chinese Americans who gave their lives in defense of freedom and democracy. But some people, not everyone, think this migration is different than those of yesteryear. For reasons that are somewhat difficult to talk about. Either way, 10 times more people from China entered the U.S. through Mexico last year than the year before. And those numbers are 50 times higher than two years prior to that. So why is this happening? Why are all these folks coming here? And more importantly, where do they go and what happens to them after they enter the United States. So here we are in New York City's Chinatown, and New York City is a popular destination for people from China that cross the U.S. southern border. In fact, New York City's Chinatown started back in the 1800s, and by 1870, you had a thousand people from China living in this area. Chinatown would have grown further, but the U.S. Congress passed anti-Chinese immigration laws, which limited the number of Chinese nationals that could enter the country. But one of the reasons for today's migration is exactly the same as it was 150 years ago, and it has to do with money. Now, as we will soon see, that is not the only reason for this migration, but many of the folks coming here from China say that their home country's economy is doing poorly. And they're here for a better life. Just like the Chinese men who left their families at home many years ago to help build the U.S. Continental Railroad. But is that true, or is this some sort of cover story for something else? And why are people saying that the Chinese government is behind this? Teaching? You're a teacher? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. We also met a banker and small business owners. Oh, oh it's hard to leave there. So in early 2020, China shut down its entire country of over a billion people. And critics say that the shutdowns there were harsher than they were in pretty much any other part of the world. And as the world learns, economic activity declines during a shutdown, which is why many people have decided to leave China looking for better economic opportunity. Now we'll get to whether or not the Chinese government is behind this, but first it's important to understand that there are many logical reasons for why one might want to leave China to come to America. Man, oh, it's wow. really good espresso. First of all, China did not fully reopen until 2023. That's three straight years of shutdowns that were devastating to the working class because of all the business restrictions. People couldn't make a living. And people were essentially shut out of their livelihoods for months on end. And China's not America, where people can just collect stimulus money during a time like this. Doesn't work that way. Many people lost everything. On top of that, there's a housing development crisis going on in China, where where several large developers have defaulted on their debt. And that's a problem because in China, property investment's one of the only opportunities out there. But this is a major scandal, 
And right now you've got people who paid for apartments to be built and will likely never see them because the builders are gone. And that was supposed to be their life savings. They were gonna buy those properties, they were gonna appreciate, and they were gonna use that to provide for themselves in the future. Also, foreign companies are pulling out of China at an alarming rate. And for the first time in 25 years, foreign direct investment in the country decreased. Worst of all, youth unemployment in China's gotten so bad that the government has simply stopped publishing statistics about it. But that's not the only cover up in this story. Or the only reason people are leaving the country. So another logical reason why people might want to leave China to come to America has to do with now you've got a lot of political and religious persecution going on. And recently the government has been cracking down even further on dissent and alternate viewpoints from what they consider to be acceptable, especially when it comes to suppressing the religious freedom of its minority Muslim population, along with those who have other religions like Christianity. And advocates say these intense religious persecutions amount to crimes against humanity, but there's a difference in how how this migration from China is taking place and how other migrations have been taking place into the United States. And that's got people speculating that there might be something else going on here. But nobody's talking about how much more difficult it is for Chinese immigrants in America than those from countries like Venezuela. The migrants were driven to a detention facility near San Diego. Typically within 72 hours, they are released into the United States and can begin the process of filing an asylum claim. So after entering the United States, immigrants from China can come to a city like New York and apply for asylum, which as you can imagine is a great destination for people who have nothing and are looking for a community that speaks a shared language. On top of that, New York is a sanctuary city with right to shelter rules, which guarantee room and board for anyone who asks. And since English is not taught in China, many of the folks arriving don't speak it. But in New York, communication barriers are not as much of a problem as they are in other parts of the United States for sure. And according to a local article, Flushing in New York City is a very popular destination because it's a large community of Chinese Americans, which may be able to offer the highest level of assistance to those who've just got here. And that's a big deal because most of the infrastructure, not just in New York, but in the rest of the country that's dedicated towards helping asylum seekers is geared toward those who may speak Spanish as a primary language. And thus, those coming from China need more help from a local community than other potential groups. Also, many immigrants from China do not stay in the city shelter system. Instead, they rely on what are called family hotels, which are a bare bones type of congregate living facility that they they can pay a minimal fee for every single day. But they're likely better than the city shelter system, which serves undercooked food and kicks you out after 30 days if you're a single adult, and 60 days if you're a family and forces you to reapply. And because the city shelters are so full, you could actually say that immigrants from China are doing New York a favor by not relying on an underfunded, overburdened system. And after establishing a living arrangement, they can begin looking for employment in the local community, which isn't exactly troubling, but some critics don't see things this way. They think the Chinese government is watching this situation and trying to exploit it. Or worse, that the Chinese government could be behind the entire thing. China, it's not like you can just drive to the airport and hop on an international flight. You need an exit visa, you gotta get money out of China. Well, there's a considerable number of them that actually have CCP ties and PLA ties. All right, so this is the People's Liberation Army? Yeah, and the Communist Party. So look at the video of these guys. Okay, so this is the part of the story that has a lot of speculation behind it and nobody knows for sure what's really going on. Critics say some asylum seekers are here at the behest of the Chinese government. And they point to some of the recent arrivals having prior experience with the Chinese military as potential proof of this. But it's important to understand that China has the largest military in the entire world. It's made up partially of volunteers and draftees. But what most people don't know is that if a local municipality misses its recruitment goal, all of the men who are 18 are automatically enrolled so that they don't miss it. Which could mean that having a military background in China is not something that is at all out of the ordinary. And I'm not sure what to make of accusations that this is some sort of invasion force. I mean, look at the interview from 60 Minutes. You see women, you see people that are 30, 40 years old. Some people say that this looks like pretty much every other migration taking place in America right now. now I'm not saying that China is going to invade the United States, but if we were to defend Taiwan, I mean, you have to think that this is a part of some plan or strategy. You'd be foolish not. Okay, so 
now they're bringing up the consideration that these could be spies or saboteurs. But again, those claims could be made about any group that's entering the United States right now. For example, you've got 500,000 people from Venezuela here in the country, which is also a communist country sanctioned by the United States, and no one's saying that they're here to do something if the U.S. invades Venezuela. But proponents say that China's a much different beast than Venezuela, with completely different national security implications for the country. So they, they become saboteurs during a, a war with a war with China over Taiwan, something like that. Is there anything to... What are they here to do? So it seems that people are pretty concerned with China because it rivals the United States on the world stage. Rival economy, rival internet, rival political goals. And there are some people who think an imminent conflict with Taiwan is on the horizon. Now, Taiwan is part of what's called the first island chain. This is a ring of islands that surround the Chinese coastline, which are all pretty much under US control. Japan, the Philippines, Taiwan. This chain of islands acts as a barrier to China's ability to project its military power to the rest of the world and limiting Chinese military power. That is a vital U.S. national interest, not to mention the interest of all of the people who live in the United States and fled China. But China claims Taiwan is part of its territory. And some people are looking at this migration situation, thinking the Chinese government's exploiting it by trying to fill the United States with assets ahead of a potential conflict, which would give them the ability to covertly operate in the United States, not necessarily with a military response, but with potential sabotage and potential spying. But there are also those who say this is incredibly unlikely because the journey from China to the United States is very long. In fact, it's the longest migration journey. And the journey's so dangerous, maybe the only people who can even make it are those who are physically fit. Maybe having prior military experience or training, maybe that's helpful when you're putting your life on the line to go somewhere that's 7,000 miles away. Some fly to Ecuador where no visa is needed. Others are flying into Tijuana airport before being guided across the border by smugglers. The Chinese migrants are reportedly willing to pay cartels up to $35,000 for smuggling services. It pays off. So Occam's razor would suggest that the simplest explanation to all of this has the highest chance of being accurate. And the idea that this is government sponsored is a lot more complicated than the idea of people who are just trying to better their lives. Which is what reporters at the border who spoke to these people People were told. Also, you can't leave China without government permission. But government officials in China have been known to take bribes in the past, and this could just be evidence that people are bribing their way past the security guards in order to get permission to leave. And with reports of some people paying cartels up to $30,000, there's probably also some money to pay the government cartel in China to get exit permission. And yes, that's a lot of money, but China's middle class is a lot better off than immigrants coming from other parts of the world. On top of that, many people would say that China's clandestine military operations here in the United States that involve things like spying are much more subtle than what's going on at the southern border. Just ask some of our elected representatives. There is a migration of Chinese immigrants that looks different, feels different, and is being housed in a totally separate way for reasons that are not in any way obvious. Now, I don't know exactly what to make of that. But the differences in Chinese migration are very explainable. They don't speak English, they don't speak Spanish. How would it benefit them to join a Spanish-speaking caravan for this long, arduous, difficult journey? And it makes sense that there's a different support network because different humanitarian organizations that have a Chinese language background are likely helping these folks. A Spanish-speaking humanitarian group would likely have trouble communicating with folks who don't speak Spanish, and vice versa. Plus, apparently, U.S. immigration authorities find it much more difficult to deport folks who come here from China and don't have their asylum application approved. Because the Chinese government will commonly refuse to take back people who've left the country. Which means that once many folks get here, this is the only place they can stay. Tammy Lin is an immigration attorney and has worked with clients from China for nearly two decades. If someone's not granted asylum here, will China then say, okay, yes, we'll take them back? I haven't seen that. So there you have it. Once you're in, you're effectively out of China. And logically, who's got the ability to take a risk like that? A middle-aged family that's already partially established, possibly with children, or people who are single adults and are possibly younger? That could partially explain why younger people who were recently in the military are coming to the country. But there are some very strange things that have recently happened between China and the United States, which is why some people think espionage could be the goal.
role here of the Chinese government. We actually had a, a, a group that were caught in scuba gear swimming off of a, a naval installation. They were just tourists though, right? They, they were great scuba sure. diving. Yeah. So over the years and for a very long time, groups of tourists from China have at certain points been accused of spying on behalf of their government. And there have even been multiple arrests, along with several convictions, which lends some credibility to the viewpoint that the Chinese government could be working to exploit the migration crisis. Chinese spying in the United States is nothing new. The two countries are competing on the international stage over everything, which is likely why ideas of Chinese government involvement have taken off. And recently, the United States government has been denying visas from China that they used to approve quite frequently in the past. Which could indicate an increasing crackdown on immigration for purposes that seem legit, but are actually happening for government-sponsored reasons. But do you think that's true? Is there more going on here than meets the eye? And is the Chinese government involved in some way, no matter how big or how small? And should Chinese immigrants get more recognition for their contributions to America than they have? Let me know. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.